our first speaker today is Dr. Chris Fries. He's going to talk to us about giving us an update about the UCSF liver transplant program. Uh, Dr. Fries has been really an exceptional transplant surgeon at UCSF for more than 20 years. And uh, he currently serves as the uh, interim director of the liver transplant program and really has shown us uh, his great leadership. Among his many very important accomplishments, he was the site PI for NIH-funded A2R consortium, which is Life Donor Liver Transplant. So thank you very much, Chris, to start off the th this program. Well, thank you, Francis. Okay, great, got it, thanks. So um, welcome, everybody. Again, I'll echo uh, Francis's uh, welcome and also thanks to our uh, industry sponsors. And Aiton, again, uh, thank you especially for uh, pulling this all together. We, we do realize how, how much work it is to bring this program together, and it looks like you've done a really great job. So in terms of uh, what I need to speak about today, I think it's, it's sort of a, a perk of being the interim chief of transplant that I get to stand up here and tell you all about our program, which I think we're all very proud of. And hopefully uh, by the end of this presentation, you'll agree um, our program really is, is quite exceptional and it's a real honor to, to, to be the interim chief of the program. Um, as Francis mentioned, we do have a, a mission um, here, uh, um, really is much more comprehensive than what we see in these two lines, but certainly providing the highest quality of specialized care is very important to our group. And then, of course, keeping us all fresh with uh, new ideas and advancing the field is what uh, keeps it really exciting. So what I'd like to start with is uh, talk a bit, little bit about um, our outcomes and uh, where we're at currently. So just looking at transplant volume, it's uh, quite remarkable for the last three years we've actually uh, been able to increase our uh, volume of transplants each of the, the previous three years. And this year, um, we're projected to hit 190 transplants, which again is a uh, really a phenomenal accomplishment. Well, one of the benefits of having a high volume of transplants and an increasing volume of transplants is we finally made a little bit of an uh, inroad on decreasing the number of patients on our waiting list, and I think this may be the first time we've been able to do that. So at the start of 2016, we had over 700 patients on our wait list, which is the biggest list in the country. We had another 322 join, and we were able to have 354 come off the list. Unfortunately, not, not all with transplantation. Some became either too ill or, or died. But at the end of this one-year interval, we were down to 693 patients. Uh, and of course, one of our goals is to get this number to zero. I don't know that we'll ever do that, but at least we're heading in the right direction. And I'm sure you all know that finding livers in our part of the country is a real challenge, and our patients have to actually become quite ill before they can draw a liver offer. If you look at the darkest areas on each of the coasts, California, of course, uh, needs a MELD score generally in excess of 30 uh, for a patient to be able to draw a liver. And that uh, phenomenon is reflected in our transplant rate, which at our center is about 25 out of 100 patients on our list get transplanted in a year's time, compared to the national average, which is uh, 54 out of 100 patients transplanted. And one might anticipate that if you have a lower transplant rate, that your weightless mortality would be unacceptably high. And you can argue that this is not a great number, but it's not any worse than the national average. And I think that's a reflection of our partnership with the providers in the community of taking care of these patients while they're on the wait list. So I think that's another uh, a great uh, outcome of our program. But this is the outcome that I think we're most proud of, and that's the actual graft and patient survival results. And if you look at our overall uh, program over this time interval of analysis, we had better than expected outcomes. And in fact, for our volume, we have the uh, best outcomes uh, of any program in the country. Uh, we have outcomes as expected for living donor, and then again, better than expected, one-year survival of 94% uh, for our deceased donors. 
So this is, a, 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 I think, a phenomenal accomplishment considering how ill our patients are, how we have limited access to livers, and really a reflection of the quality and hard work that our program provides. Just a couple of other summary ideas. In uh, 2016, as I mentioned, we had a record-breaking year in terms of volume. I think we're going to pass that again, making us the second uh, busiest program in the country. Uh, we are also the busiest program in terms of living donor liver transplantation in the country. And you might say 34 doesn't sound like very much, but uh, for a living donor program, that's actually a very large number. And we've been able to achieve this over a very long period of time, greater than a decade. We've had results uh, better than expected, or at least as expected, in both one and three year graft survival. Again, a very consistent high level of quality. So you might ask, how did we get here to have these results for such a long period of time? And I think it really reflects all the way back to our foundation and our founders, including Dr. Bass, who's here today, of course. The program was started in 1988 under the leadership of Dr. Asher and Roberts, and I'm certainly humbled that they passed over the, the keys to me to this red Ferrari of a program, uh, trying not to crash it, uh, and sometimes trying to step on the accelerator a little bit. Um, but clearly their uh, surgical leadership, uh, along with the hepatology leadership, and the concept of developing an approach to care of the patient with liver disease via a multidisciplinary approach was really a great uh, concept and I think has served us in our patients well. Well, I think another feature is the fact that we're highly inbred. Certainly on the surgical side, all of us in our group of nine surgeons have trained at the UCSF fellowship program, except for John and Nancy, of course, who started the program. The GI team is also fairly highly inbred, although we do have a few invaders from the outside. Um, and uh, uh, what excites me is it's really a great group of younger people with a lot of enthusiasm. And if you look at our group here of uh, hepatologists, you'll see uh, they're smiling faces and not very many gray hairs. It's a, it's a great group. And if you look at the surgical group, which uh, I think demonstrates one thing we don't do very well, and that's update our pictures. There's uh, not as much gray hair as in these pictures as really exists, uh, but this is the group of the nine of us. We all uh, have uh, several different hats that we wear um, besides our liver transplant. Uh, work. Uh, Dr. Roberts, of course, is now the interim chair of uh, surgery, was the previous uh, director of the transplant uh, group. And Dr. Asher, uh, also the previous uh, chief of transplant and chair of surgery, is now the International Transplant Society president. Uh, Dr. Sandy Fang, who uh, runs our fellowship program, which is really an essential uh, job to draw the best fellows to help us take care of your patients. Uh, myself, uh, just uh, appointed as interim director, uh, Dr. Hirose, who uh, does a, a really great job of watching over our quality, uh, Dr. Kang, who's a transplant surgeon, very interested in resections and also uh, heads up our intestinal rehab unit, uh, Dr. Poselt, uh, who has a specialty in bariatric surgery and will take on patients that I think a lot of other places wouldn't even think about offering bariatric procedures, and then, of course, Dr. Stock, who also runs our pediatric program and, and uh, pancreas program. And then the baby in the group, uh, Dr. Roll, who's uh, doing more and more work every day. And I did a little calculation. If you take all of our collective experience, you're looking at over 150 years worth of uh, transplant experience, which I think uh, helps to explain uh, some of our results. Well, it's not just the physicians, of course, that make this program uh, run and run well. Uh, we have different uh, uh, personnel in all aspects of the patient's care. Our pre-transplant coordinator team is also quite experienced and absolutely vital in getting these patients ready for transplant and managing them on the list, and those uh, individuals are shown here. When the patient is in the hospital, we have a very strong inpatient uh, nurse practitioner team that helps to take care of these patients. And post-transplant, uh, at least from the surgical side, uh, a group that we really rely on to watch these patients progress, monitor their labs, adjust their medications, and really uh, just an outstanding group 
of uh, post-transplant nurse practitioners. We have a dedicated team for the living donor uh, transplant program, and I'm sorry, Anne-Marie, I screwed up your name there, but uh, not only do we have a nurse practitioner and our pre-transplant coordinator, but also a social worker who's dedicated uh, as our living donor advocate. Besides the nursing staff, uh, we have a very strong uh, social work support staff, and this is an absolutely critical piece of our team, especially in those patients when we're concerned about whether they have the uh, uh, support around them to make them through transplant. And we have a similar person in our pediatric group. And then, of course, our pharmacists, which uh, help to navigate through all the complicated medication uh, regimens that these patients are on and then nutrition services, another important part of uh, helping our patients recover. And then, of course, our hepatitis C program, which manages not only post-transplant patients, but also other patients with hepatitis C, and I think has been a really strong group. And then, besides the people that are under the umbrella of transplantation, the other support that we get through uh, groups in the medical center. These include a dedicated anesthesia team, dedicated nursing staff in the operating room, which really make uh, transplantation procedures run a lot more smoothly. We have an absolutely outstanding interventional radiology group. You're gonna hear from uh, Dr. Curlin a bit later and have saved our butts many, many times. Um, strong infectious disease, a dedicated transplant infectious disease group that helps with all the unusual infections that our patients get. And then the usual other support internal medicine groups of cardiology and neurology, et cetera, uh, really have been uh, uh, part of the team that uh, benefits our patients. So where is this Ferrari going now that we've kind of had a nice stable ride? And I think, as I said earlier, this is the part that excites us each day as we come into work. What new avenues can we uh, explore to better take care of our patients? Certainly one area of our practice that has been growing on the surgical side, thanks to referrals from our hepatologists and from you all in the community, is our what we like to call daytime work. Um, liver resections is a, is a big growing practice right now. Uh, we're very interested in, in doing more and more procedures laparoscopically. Um, and we really have a very robust multidisciplinary tumor board uh, that meets twice a week because we have such a large volume of cases. And that's been, I think, a really uh, great, great part of our program. I have a strong interest in liver cyst disease, so we deal with a fair number of patients that have that issue. And then, of course, we're always interested in dealing with biliary tract disease and cholangiocarcinoma. So although we're transplant surgeons, we're very interested in anything and everything liver involved. We'll even take your gallbladders. That's just fine. Now, uh, in terms of future uh, programs and programs that are getting off the ground, um, the HOPE Act, which is a, a, a law which allows for HIV positive donors uh, to, to give organs, is now in place. And we have several recipients that are signed up to receive HIV positive livers. Of course, they have a, the recipients have HIV as well. And we've already done one this year and would expect to be doing more in the future. Very interesting study run by Dr. Tarot, known as the PROACT study, will actually be evaluating the use of hepatitis C positive donor livers in recipients who do not have hepatitis C and can then be treated afterwards. And I think this is a very uh, interesting area, especially since with the opioid epidemic, we're seeing a huge influx of uh, hepatitis C positive donors and trying to figure out how we can use those livers better. You'll probably hear more about our virtual tumor board, which uh, is being supported by the medical center, where we can have expert panels review cases that you folks can bring in to the, to the tumor board. Um, in support of the living donor uh, liver program, we've developed a, a, a program known as the Living Donor Champion Program, where we can help to educate, um, support people around a, potential living donor recipient as to how to ask other people in their <clears throat> group um, if they would be interested in being a donor. So it's a very uh, strong education program uh, for recipients. 
We had a very interesting case that we did involving living donors, both a kidney liver, living donor and a liver living donor who actually exchanged organs to their respective recipients. And as far as I know, it's the first exchange of uh, organs um, crossing organ types in the country, if not in the world. Maybe we'll be doing more of those as well. And then I think a very interesting uh, project that's being developed in the country is the use of liver perfusion devices, and, and uh, we are uh, working with both of the current um, makers of these devices, uh, assessing whether they're gonna uh, be a viable uh, way to use some livers that we may have discarded in the past. And here's just a uh, picture of the current device we're using. It's a, a little bit big since it has almost an onboard laboratory with it, but the liver uh, sits in this little box here and it's continuously perfused uh, by the device. You can see a cannula here in the hepatic artery, one in the portal vein, and this may be a way to use uh, livers with higher fat content or older donors that we wouldn't have considered using in the past. So a very exciting area of investigation. I think the star child of our program currently, however, is living donor. A liver transplantation, and you've heard several presentations over the last 15 years of this conference uh, regarding this topic. I think we all know the advantages of living donor liver transplant in terms of decreasing waiting time, um, improving survival since patients don't have to face the uh, challenges and the morbidity of remaining on the wait list, and uh, you know is also daytime surgery when we set it up properly. Um, Classically, the living donor liver transplantation used as a right lobe graft, but we've been very interested in really, I think one of the leaders in the country in using left lobe grafts with the idea that it, it is a little bit safer operation for the donors. And you can look at our volumes over the last almost uh, uh, 15 years and, and the lighter gray is our left lobe experience and the darker is the right lobe experience and you can see we've generally had a sea change in terms of trying to use the left lobe when it's appropriate, and fortunately have maintained our outcomes with nearly equivalent results between right and left lobe livers. So this is clearly a program that I think can grow more and hit the, um, in the hands of Dr. Asher and Dr. Roberts has really had excellent results. So that's my update on our program. I hope you can all enjoy the meeting and I'll urge you if you have any questions, complaints, concerns. Um, Dr. Yao gave you his contact information. I'd be happy to chat with any of you as well. Feel free to, to contact me and um, welcome to the meeting and enjoy. Thank you.